In this video, we are going to learn about render fragment and generic components. Let's start talking about render fragment. We know that we can pass parameters to a component. These parameters can be data, like a string, a date, a boolean, or even an object. We can also pass, we can also pass methods as a parameter to a component by the use of the event callback type. But besides data and behavior, we can pass content to a component. We can pass a section of code. We can pass razor code to a component. Why is this important? Well, for example, if you have a model component that you want to reuse in different parts of your application, it would be nice to be able to parameterize the content of the model. That way, in the model, you can put a message, a form, an image, or whatever you want. And you can do that by parameterizing the content of the model by using a render fragment parameter. Now let's see an example of a component that will have a render fragment parameter. Let's see down here and see that we are displaying a list of people. We are doing for each bar person in people and we are displaying every person in the people array. And before that we have if people equal to null, then display a loading message, and if people.length is zero, then display the message there are not records in the database. We can imagine that this is some logic that we will repeat every time we want to display a list, not only a list of people, but also a list of addresses, a list of animals, a list of invoices, and whatever kind of list we want to display to the user. We want to check that the array or the list is not null, and if it isn't null, then we want to check that it has at least one element. If it doesn't, then we want to display a message, and if it has more than zero element, then we want to display something. We can actually encapsulate this logic so that we don't have to be repeating this code through our application by the use of a generic component that will handle all this logic. So let's do that. Let's go to the Solution Explorer. Let's go to share, right click, and let's add a new item, Razor component, and we will call it generic list. In this generic list component, we will be able to display the elements of a list. And if the list is empty, then we will display a message like this. So let's take this, let's copy this, and let's paste it here, and we will say else. Now, as we said, this component is not only for working with list of persons. We want this component to be able to work with any other data type. So for that, we have to make this component generic. And the idea of making a component generic is that we will be able to send a data type as a parameter, not an object, but a data type. This will make our component flexible so that it can handle several data types. In order to make this component generic, we use the type param directive, type param, and we give a name to the variable, let's say t element. And now let's make a parameter, parameter, because we want to receive the list of elements to display. We will say list, we have to say public, we'll say public list of type t element, whatever the type is. It can be person, it can be address, it can be invoice, etc. And we will just say elements get and set. And here we can say if elements is null, then we will display this message. If elements count is zero, then we will display this. And if it isn't nor or empty, then we want to display something that the user wants the component to display. For that, we will use the render fragment parameter. Let's experiment a little bit with a render fragment parameter first. Let's go here and let's create a parameter. We will say parameter public of type render fragment. And if you are only going to use one render fragment, you can name it child content and then you can put it in whatever part of the component you want. For example, I can just put it here. Let's say I will put it inside a div. I will just call it generate list class just to see that this is being rendered inside this div. For the moment, I will comment this out, and now I will go back to the index.razor component, and just for this test, I am going to comment this out too, just so it doesn't distract us. 
and I will use the generic list component. Now here inside of the generic list, I can say something like a span, a style, color equal red. This is a message. And we're having some issues with this parameter type. So we can comment it out. And now we can test our application. We will see that we are passing here what is going to be displayed here. Let's press Ctrl F5 to run our application. Now let's go to people and we can see that we have this is a message and we can inspect this and we will see that we have a span style color red. This is a message and we have it inside of a div with a class called generic list, which means that we are actually passing content as a parameter and displaying it here. So now let's move on with our example. Let's delete this and let's uncomment this and this also. Now what we want to do is to allow the user to define what is going to be displayed here if the elements parameter is null, here if the elements parameter is empty, and here if there are elements in this list. So for that we are going to define three render fragment parameters. So let's start with the first one. We'll say parameter public render fragment null template and we can do two things. We can do the following. We can just say here null template and that will be fine but this means that this template is required but we can provide a default value for this section of the code by doing the following. We can say if null template is equal to null then we will display this loading message here. If it is not null, then we will display the null template. This way, we can give the user the flexibility to use a default implementation of the null template render fragment. We can do the same here for the empty case. We can say parameter public render fragment and let's delete this one, we don't need it. And we'll say empty template and we can do the same, we can say if empty template is equal to null, then we will display a default message to the user and if not, then we will display the empty template. Finally, we can do the same for the case in which we want to display the content of the list. We can say render fragment, we can say with elements template and put it here. Now let's make some tests. Let's go back to the index.razor component, let's delete this and see that here we can define which of the render fragments we are going to use. For example, I can say null template and here I can put whatever I want to be placed in this spot. And here we can put a gif, for example, I'll say image source and let's close this. And we're getting an error because we're not specifying the list. So let's get that out of the way. Let's say elements and we will say people, but people here, I think it's an array. So let's make it a list of people, person actually. And here let's also say list of person. And this will take care of this error. And now we don't have any errors here. And now let's say with elements template and here I can just copy and paste this table, this whole section. I'll cut it and I'll paste it here. Now as you can see what we're doing here is that we're personalizing, we're customizing whatever is going to be displayed when the people list is null and what it is going to be displayed when we got elements on the people list. So just to visualize this GIF that we are displaying, let's use a task delay. Let's say await task delay and let's say four seconds for example. Now let's compile our application and let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's close the console. Let's refresh the page and we can see that we have the GIF here and after four seconds we are going to get our list. Now again, the magic of this component, the generic list component, is that now we are able to 
reuse it with every list that we want to display in our application. And let's also see that we can do this. We can say people equal to new list of person just to see that if the people list is empty, then we will get the default message that there are no records to show. Let's go here. Let's refresh. We get our GIF here. And now we have there are not records in the database. So as we can see, you can choose to personalize what is going to be displayed on a render fragment, or you can choose to display some default content for a specific render fragment parameter. Finally, something else that you can do with render fragment parameters is to pass information to them. Let's see an example of this. Let's say that I don't want to do something like this in which I am iterating the list of people here, but what I want is something like the following. I want to say, let's say with individual element template, and I just want to say something like, show me the name of the person, just to say an example. The idea here is that the render fragment is going to receive a person object and here from the index.razor, I am going to say what I want you to do with the person. I want to display its name. I want to display this name inside of a div or whatever. So let's do that. For that, we have to define a generic render fragment. Let's create a new parameter. And as you can see, we have render fragment, which we have been using, and a generic render fragment. And here I can say something like, the T element, of course, because if this is a list of people, then you want this render fragment to work with a people, with a person. And now let's give it a name. I am going to use this name that I have here. And what I am going to do is to say if this template, and let me remove this, if this template is different than null, then I will use it. But if it isn't, then I am going to use this render fragment. For that, I will say the following. For each bar element in elements, I am iterating this list. Then I will pass to this render fragment the current element. And now from here, I can say something like, instead of person, I can say context name. The reason why we have to use context is because that is the default name for the element that we are receiving here. If we don't want to use that name context, then we can rename it. We can say context equal to, let's say person in this case. And now I can say person here. And as you can see, this variable person is of type person. We can put it inside a div and let's put the person here, the person name here. And let's actually move this out of this instance of the component. We're going to say generate list. We will take this out to here just so that we can see that we can use two instances of the component at the same time and so we have this instance that it is using a table and this other instance in which i am using div so now let's compile our application and let's see this in action let's go back to google chrome let's refresh the page and we have a loading here and we have the same message in both Let's use a div here, just so that we have them in two different lines. And let's remove this here. And let's uncomment this out. Let's recompile again. Let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's refresh the GIF and loading. And as you can see, we have the table here with Felipe, a new person. And here we have two divs with Felipe, a new person also. So in this video, we learn how to use render fragments in order to pass content as a parameter to a component. And besides that, we learn how to use the type parent directive that allows us to have generic components which can handle several data types. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.